Hi, I'm Dennis Parker, and I'm the owner and operator of Certified Hypnotherapy Training School in Farmington, Utah. We're attached to the Advanced Health Clinic, where I also work as a contract hypnotherapist for the clinic. And I get to participate in uh, client services, if you will, uh, with many of the uh, clients that come through the clinic and uh, work with folks on overcoming self-limiting beliefs, inappropriate habits, uh, and conquering their maladaptive behaviors. Certified Hypnotherapy Training School is an approved American Council of Hypnotist Examiners training school. You will learn to be competent, confident, and be effective as a certified hypnotherapist. Certified Hypnotherapy Training School is a post-secondary proprietary school of hypnotherapy in the state of Utah, registered and bonded with the Department of Commerce. The school trains individuals in hypnosis, self-hypnosis, and hypnotherapy to be certified hypnotherapists and certified clinical hypnotherapists through the American Council of Hypnotist Examiners. A school teaching hypnotherapy will open January 6th in Farmington. Certified hypnotherapist and director of the school, Dennis Parker, says the school will be a place for people to learn how to help others as well as themselves. The idea there is, is that everybody can come in and, and dump off all of their own behavioral issues and get their own life in order, so to speak. So they're in a position to understand uh, you know, what clients go through because now they've been through it. Parker says hypnotherapy can help teachers understand their students, doctors treat their patients, parents help their children, as well as cure individuals of destructive habits. And a new school in Farmington is teaching self-help through hypnosis. The certified training school was started by W. Dennis Parker, who says the idea behind hypnosis is that there are six trance states that we can observe and that we can help people stop their mind if you will in that level and we know what therapeutic benefit each level of trance as someone goes off to sleep has for therapeutic purposes and parker says by stopping the mind in one of those trance states a person can learn better self-control anger management sports performance enhancement weight loss and self-confidence ksl news time this is also where Certified Hypnotherapy Training School is held and broadcast nationwide. Greg Bickmore and Dennis Parker join to bring you years of experiential learnings, client experiences, and testimonials in this new explanation of how behaviors are created and how we can change them with new spiritual and mental skills. We can accomplish the changes we have always wanted. We can become the person we want to be. Craig grew up in Cedar City, Utah. He fulfilled an LDS mission to California and then attended the now Southern Utah University. He met the love of his life, Lori, married and began raising a family and working part-time in several businesses to pay for life and school. He also attended Utah State University where he received an MBA in Business Administration. For the past 24 years, he has been employed with one of Utah's finest trade associations, which has given him the opportunity to work with various members of the Utah Legislature, regulatory agencies, both state and federal, and participate on volunteer boards related to that association. He currently serves as the co-chair of the American Cancer Society Advisory Board of Utah and is involved with many others in the state who are engaged in the fight to eliminate cancer. For over 20 years, one of his greatest passions has been the development and practice of hypnosis and hypnotherapy in Utah. He works diligently at educating others in the true utilizations and benefits of trans hypnotherapy. He brings to people the understanding that hypnosis, once understood and applied, can be one of the most effective and powerful tools in overcoming life's challenges and concerns. He knows that the basis of climbing upward in self-improvement processes is about focusing and refocusing on what you want and eliminating the obstacles that impede personal progress, regardless if those obstacles are self-caused or arise from other circumstances. He has successfully overcome many of his own life's challenges by implementing the principles of hypnosis that he now teaches to others. 
Craig has worked with many people who share his zest for life and have applied the techniques in self-hypnosis and hypnotherapy to improve their life and the lives of their family members. After all, what do you have to lose except a few bad habits or a non-productive belief or two? Craig is the father of six children and is an ACHE certified clinical hypnotherapist. He believes in the following adage. If you want to make significant gains in your life that are geometric in nature, then you have to take the required time to learn and practice the principles of hypnosis and self-hypnosis, because it will get you where you want to go faster than anything else he has ever experienced. Craig is a board member of the Hypnotist Examining Council of Utah, and active as a guest presenter and lecturer at Certified Hypnotherapy Training School in Farmington, Utah. About Dennis. Dennis is a noted certified clinical hypnotherapist registered with the American Council of Hypnotist Examiners since 1991. He is a board certified hypnotherapist examiner, instructor, and approved school operator. He is a motivational inspirational public speaker and sales trainer. He does numerous seminars and workshops on mind management for a variety of applications. His stress mind management programs have been a favorite. These programs are life changing and really work. He has developed several unique applications of hypnotherapy and proprietary techniques of mind management and other hypnotherapy protocols that he teaches and applies to the personal career development of himself and others. He is the primary instructor and director of Certified Hypnotherapy Training School where he teaches others what he has learned over the past 22 years of doing clinical hypnotherapy. Dennis is a contract clinical hypnotherapist at Advanced Health Clinic where Certified Hypnotherapy Training School is held and broadcast online nationwide in live virtual classroom settings. Dennis does individual sessions of hypnotherapy there as well as group trainings in mind management at the clinic. Advanced Health Clinic brings together talented doctors and therapists from different modalities to provide traditional and alternative natural healing methods and practices into a blend of services which are calculated to meet individual needs providing appropriate benefits to each client. My 60th birthday was a very reflective day I wrote a new life's mission statement, a part of which I will share here. I will accomplish more good in the last 20 years of my life than I have the previous 60 years combined. I will be an influence for positive change with more people and assist more people to better their lives and fulfill their desires, dreams, and goals by teaching and coaching them in self-hypnosis and hypnotherapy or in truth, pondering, and meditation trance utilization skills. I will assist others to overcome self-limiting beliefs, eliminate self-defeating habits, and conquer maladaptive behaviors, and do so myself as well. I will teach these personal problem-solving skills that have changed and improved my life in numerous ways to as many as have interest and want to learn them. So my wife Susie and I started Certified Hypnotherapy Training School where I have the opportunity to achieve such goals. I enjoy being part of the success of others. It is rewarding to be a positive influence in the lives of so many and create a ripple effect of good through the students as they in turn assist their clients in positive personal improvement. Dennis and his wife Susie are the parents of 11 children, eight boys and three girls. They currently have 33 grandchildren with anticipation of many more. This is Dennis's favorite family photo. The young boy on his lap is now in the Navy in San Diego, married, and has two children of his own. Personal interests have to do with church responsibilities, golfing, camping, fishing, gardening, yard work, and spending time with their family. They enjoy Sunday dinners together and other family activities. Dennis has a love of horses and spends time with his horse, Sonny.
certified hypnotherapy training school, trained students in hypnosis, self-hypnosis, hypnotherapy, and unique proprietary mind management protocols to be certified hypnotherapists and certified clinical hypnotherapists through the American Council of Hypnotist Examiners. It takes approximately three to four months of part-time effort to complete the courses. You can now start anytime learning at your own pace. The school is a post-secondary proprietary school of hypnotherapy in the state of Utah, registered and bonded with the Department of Commerce. ACHE hypnotherapist certificates are recognized and accepted throughout the United States and in over 20 countries. My name is Deanne Smith. I'm a hypnotherapy student and during the day I work as a school psychologist. As a school psychologist, one of my duties is to work with students to help them change their behavior, to bring about behavior modification. And most of the programs I have are maybe 10 sessions long or 16 sessions long, so it takes a good deal of time. I was amazed my first night of class when I came here and watched Dennis do in one or two sessions what takes me weeks to accomplish. On a personal level, I was able to overcome some of my own self-limiting doubts and beliefs that I've had since childhood and learn how to manage my mind so that I can take care of those same problems in the future if they come back. Even if I never used these skills in a career, it has been worth it to know that I can help my friends and family and myself. I would recommend this school to anyone that wants to learn more about themselves or wants to learn how to help people to change their behavior. I'm Robin Erickson. I've learned how to eliminate those self-limiting beliefs that we all carry around with us that hold us back, and I've obtained a sense of growth and freedom through hypnosis. What I've learned through hypnotherapy is how to overcome my own self-limiting beliefs by learning how my mind works. I've gained the knowledge of how to manage my own mind, and it gives me a basis to help others do personal problem solving. The impact that it's had on my life is I've allowed to let many things go that I've, I've carried with me throughout my life that has helped me back. I've also learned that hypnotherapy is a tool that allows me to enhance my current career and it would do the same for anyone in their current career. I would recommend the school to anyone who is interested in learning how to manage their own mind and to share with others how to do so as well. My name is Paige Rogers and I am a student at Certified Hypnotherapy Training School. I was a smoker for almost 10 years and I did one therapy session um, and I have been smoke free since. I haven't had any cravings and it's been very easy for me to overcome one of the biggest challenges in my life. I would highly recommend the school for anybody who is wanting to improve themselves as well as wanting to help improve the, their loved ones in their lives. We have numerous reference letters from hypnotherapy clients and our many seminars and workshops. A few are listed here. Intermountain Healthcare's annual convention of the Amerinet Association in Anaheim, California for stress management through self-hypnosis. The Utah Healthcare Association, many seminars and workshops have been done over the years. Weber County Human Services, Utah Valley Community College, World Scientific Congress of Golf, Dennis spoke in Phoenix in April on the subject of the subconscious golfer utilizing hypnotherapy for golf. He did a two-hour workshop for trainers and athletes and professional coaches from all over the world. He has spoken at the Idaho Healthcare Association annual conventions, Shriners Hospital for association meetings, the Department of the Treasury for again stress management through self-hypnosis. These are obviously posted here to build credibility. Should you wish to read them, stop the video and review them at your leisure. For further information and references, please go to www.wdennisparker.com.
Okay, uh, let's get started this morning. What I want to uh, visit with you about first is, is that uh, today's a workshop day. And today in the workshop, we're going to be doing some things differently than we have in the past. As we've talked about, we continue to evolve in our processes. And uh, some of the things that we're doing now are completely new and different to what we were doing, you know, uh, even uh, a few months ago. And based on the effectiveness of these mind management techniques and principles that we're applying now to different clients, and the uh, effect that it's having in uh, behavioral change, uh, sometimes in just immediate and, and dramatic ways. Uh, we have a number of uh, people coming in today that we're going to work through some of these processes. Uh, with that being said, as kind of an introduction, we want to work with uh, Caleb this morning. Caleb is uh, Kevin's son. Uh, Caleb has been to see me uh, twice already and we're going to turn the uh, camera around over here and we'll get everything focused on Caleb and we're going to start this morning with the session. When you first came in and the first time I met you when you came in and you sat in this chair, do you remember what you came in for? Yeah, exactly. And you had these fears of uh, aliens and Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? Yeah. Do you remember what those fears were that you were experiencing at that time? Three main ones were fears, werewolves, and something happening to mom and dad. Okay. And so we've done some uh, we've done some work on what we would call uh, desensitizing your imagination and those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. And how's that work for you so far? Pretty good. When your parents leave, are you still experiencing some of that, or? Mm, not as bad. Not it's, as bad. Yeah, it's been way better. Way better. So if you would, if you were to say that before, when you first came in, it was like at a ten, meaning that the maximum fear was a ten. About three. Yeah. About three. No, about there. About at a ten. Okay, and then where would you say it is today while you're sitting here? Mm, four or five. A four or five? Yeah, four. Okay. So if it's still at a four, then that means we still have a little more work to do. Yeah. Okay, that means there'd be another thought or two that we ought to uh, that we ought to work on. Mm -hmm. So would that be okay? Mm -hmm. So you kinda know how to do this now. If you don't mind, why don't you just close your eyes? Good. Look down to the left. I also want to answer many of the common questions that we get asked about the school and hopefully give you the information that you would need and want to make a decision and a choice as to whether or not you want to be a participant. One of the first questions that we get is who should attend? And our answer to that is, is anyone who wants to learn to modify their own behaviors and also then be able to utilize those skills and talents and abilities that they develop here to assist others to modify theirs. The next question we get asked a lot is, is why should I attend this particular school? There are lots of schools out there. What makes this school unique and different? Um, good question. The one thing that I would answer about that would be is that we teach in a broad range of applications of hypnotherapy and we have a substantial amount of experience in dealing with different behavioral modification applications. We have a very clear focus of what it is that we're going to train you to do as hypnotherapists. You are going to learn to assist your clients how to overcome self-limiting beliefs, overcome inappropriate habits, and conquer their maladaptive behaviors. What do we mean by these three? Let's talk about the first one self-limiting beliefs. Self-limiting beliefs are those beliefs that we have taken on mostly from childhood when we were very suggestible and highly imaginative in a state that we call somnambulism. As a child we were very imaginative. In the school of thought that we attend here we talk about the fact that the imagination is the amplifier in the mind 
and can amplify any thought from 0 to 2,500 times. So we can take any little thought, amplify it in our imagination up to 2,500 times, and that thought can become an inhibiting experience that binds us down, holds us back, and keeps us from being all we want to be. We've taken on many of these thoughts in childhood, such as, I'm not good enough, I'm not smart enough, I'm not as good looking, I could never do that. They're so much smarter than I am. Yes, as children we've taken on misunderstandings, misinterpretations, misrepresentations of ourselves to ourselves and have a lot of misunderstandings around those things that actually happen to us. If we've amplified those up to 2,500 times and they are still inhibiting us as an adult, those become the self-limiting beliefs that we need to challenge and change. These are very well addressed through hypnotherapy. When people bump off these self-limiting beliefs and acknowledge the truth of themselves, that they're just as capable, just as talented, just as smart as others, they just need to maybe apply themselves new and differently than they have in the past because of the acceptance of these limiting beliefs. Life changes immediately for them. They move forward at a new pace in life that they never before thought possible. As a hypnotherapist, you will also be working with people to overcome their inappropriate habits. We work with teenagers who are still sucking their thumb or bedwetting or other inappropriate habits. These are all well addressed with hypnotherapy. As well as people with sleeping problems or fears of flying or fears or phobias about heights, uh, those kinds of imaginary fears and tensions that people build up in their minds, again through their imagination, are all well addressed through hypnotherapy. Hypnotherapy is the one field that addresses the imagination and we teach you how to help people to overcome those things in their imagination that really are causing them problems because of over amplification. Hi, my name is Bianca Chavez and I'm a student in hypnotherapy school and I have learned how to um, figure out why I was feeling so down and um, that I was just stuck in my imagination and I've learned how to notice and recognize that and um, become more efficient with managing my mind. Um, it has helped me to learn that I was over amplifying a lot of my problems in my mind and making it the end of the world when Actually, I, it was just all in my imagination. And now that I know how to tone that down, I can be realistic about what needs to be done and um, how to solve my problem. Now, somnambulism is a very highly creative state. It's a very imaginative state. It's the state that we were all in as little children. And as little children, you know, little girls could play house all day. Ken and Barbie go to the beach. Ken and Barbie go to the prom. Little boys can play the stick, you know, it's a G.I. Joe gun for a while, it's a pogo stick, it's, it can be a stick horse. Uh, we can do all of these different things in our imaginations as kids. Now, most of us did not develop a critical factor, as they say, until somewhere between the years of 7 and 10. And between 7 and 10, we started to develop this critical faculty, which actually equates to a filter, if you will, a belief system filter, that filters out thought between our conscious and our subconscious minds. And that, that critical factor as it develops uh, causes us obviously to do more critical analytical thinking, logical thinking in the conscious mind. And then we have to make a decision and choice, if you will, if we're going to allow that stimulation, that thought belief through the critical factor to stimulate subconscious functions now of imaginations, memories, and then our emotions. Now, the key to that is, is that once, it get, once this thought gets through the critical faculty now, or the critical factor, our imagination can amplify any thought from zero to 2,500 times. So we can take any thought and make a really big deal out of it in our imaginations. Now, that thought being in our imagination, amplified to whatever level we take it to, now we drop that thought through our memories. 
our memories, we do a memory search and we are looking for those memories that justify, validate, and defend the belief that we've chosen. As we find experiences and we find those kinds of experiences that justify, validate, justify, validate and defend our chosen belief, now we can take that experience and that generates a lot of emotional content and our emotions tend to generate our behaviors because we tend to behave the way we feel. So, in review, in somnambulistic trance and all these other trance states, the process begins with a stimulus which generates predominant thought beliefs. Those predominant thought beliefs, when accepted, will pass through the critical factor and into subconscious functions of imaginations, memories, and emotions. And we tend to behave the way we feel, so our emotions actually drive our behaviors. Example, if we get up in the morning, we feel all grumpy, grouchy, and irritable, how do we normally behave? But what we want to recognize is, is that that grumpy, grouchy, and irritable behavior is coming out of grumpy, grouchy, and irritable emotions that are being driven by over-amplified grumpy, grouchy, and irritable thoughts. Now the key to hypnotherapy is, is that hypnosis slows down our thought processes. It actually isolates one thought at a time. So we can actually go in, slow down our thought processes, and find challenge and change that grumpy, grouchy, and irritable thought to something more pleasant. And as we do, now we have desensitized the imagination. We've altered the perception of the memories. That collapses the emotional content. Now we've changed the behavior. So in a very simplified form, that's hypnotherapy. That process takes place in all these trance states, but we find that when we're in somnambulistic trance, we utilize that process a lot because desensitization of the imagination is absolutely necessary. And hypnotherapists are to be, if you will, imagination experts. Because we recognize and understand the overamplification of the imagination in both negative and positive directions and what that does to the individual in their, in their behaviors. What happens to lots of people is, is that in their youth, in those years from you know zero to seven or eight, whenever they developed a critical factor, they had stimulating uh, traumatic experiences of some sort or other. Uh, oftentimes it's just an argument between their parents that they didn't understand as a young child. Uh, it can be uh, you know a fight with a sibling. It can be a teacher in grade school making a comment or scolding them. Uh, those thoughts that they take in uh, through misinterpretation, misrepresentation of themselves to themselves, misunderstandings, or even accepted outright lies that somebody had made a comment about them, you know, you're not good enough to do that, or you'll never be smart enough to accomplish that, you know, you're just stupid. All those kinds of statements that we've heard, some people grab a hold of those and amplify them to greater degrees than others. Well. Some folks have never really developed their critical factor to a great degree, and therefore those kinds of comments and suggestions automatically get through the filter quickly and easily and always become overamplified. These folks are generally uh, what we call natural somnambulance, and the dictionary term for natural somnambulant is a sleepwalker, uh, which really means that these people are walking around in a chronic state of trance and don't even know it. And these are the folks that stage hypnotists are preying upon and are looking for to do their stage show because they're very highly suggestible, they're very vulnerable, they're already in trance and they don't need to do hypnotic induction. They just have them sit down, give them a few suggestions and boom, out they go. But what we still want to recognize about that is, is that hypnosis is not mind control. Those people are choosing to act the way they are acting and they're doing that for their own purposes. I mean, maybe they always wanted to be an actor. They wanted to feel like what it was going to be like to be on stage. Uh, they wanted to participate in that show for whatever reason. They really make an agreement, if you will, with a stage hypnotist to perform the things that he asks them to do. Now, are they really in trance? Are they vulnerable? Yes. Uh, to the degree that they would ever do anything that they don't really want to do? No and uh, you know kind of just to prove that out a little bit a couple of examples stories that we use my wife some 22 23 years ago was asked by a lady in church you know hey what's dentist doing getting into mind control we understand he's getting into hypnosis and Susie came up with the best answer to that and simply told the lady if it were mind control we would have perfect children <laughs> 
and that seemed to resolve that because at the time we had 11 uh, very healthy, active, bouncing off the wall little kids, and and uh, oft times, yeah, they would elbow and kick in church and do those kinds of things that kids do, and uh, so people kind of got the idea that yeah, it must not be mind control, or or we would have uh, better kids, so to speak. Uh, the other logical thing you can think about, and kind of the other joke in the industry is, is that, you know, if it were really mind control, then we'd be the richest people on the planet because we could hypnotize somebody and have them, uh, you know, go out and rob a bank and come back and tell them they wouldn't remember the experience, have them give us the money and then go home in some stupor. And uh, so hypnotists would be the wealthiest people on the planet. The fact of the matter is, is that none of that works uh, and is true. They're all myths and they're myths perpetuated by uh, TV shows and stage shows that have to create the illusion that Nanu Nanu you are now in my power and that's the entertainment value of the stage show or the TV show is to create this mystical power, this illusion of power if you will uh, so that it has some entertainment value and people uh, go off in their imagination and this mystery of of hypnosis. Uh, so somnambulism is a state that we have to actually, uh, when people come in and they're, they're in somnambulism uh, in constant somnambulistic trance, those are the folks that we actually dehypnotize, not hypnotize. And if truth be known here, I dehypnotize more people than I hypnotize because we're helping these folks come back to a full state of consciousness and actually come out of trance, not put them deeper into trance. Uh, life has hypnotized them years ago, if you will. One of the things that you will learn new and different from our school that most do not understand is that there is a large population out there of people who are walking around in a chronic state of trance. These folks need to be dehypnotized, not hypnotized. And we will teach you dehypnosis techniques as well as hypnosis techniques. As you investigate other schools, ask them what is their dehypnosis program and who do they apply it to. Many people out there need to be able to find consciousness. And we work with people all the time who have never had a conscious day in their lives. And yet they don't understand that because they don't understand trance and they don't really understand hypnotherapy. Welcome to the American Council of Hypnotist Examiners 20th Annual International Hypnotherapy Conference held April 7th through the 10th, 2005. We now join this session recorded live in Glendale, California. My name is Dennis Parker. I'm glad to be here and just quickly by way of introduction, I was trained by Virgil Hayes and I don't know if those of you who are long timers may remember Virgil some 15, 16 years ago when I first took my training. And then since then, I've also had a number of trainings here at the conferences over the years and so on. I've been actually doing this as certified uh, since 1991 and got involved several years before that, before I actually stepped up to the plate and took the real training and, and those kinds of things. I'll tell you a little bit more of my background as we go along. But I'm grateful to be here and, and certainly feel like I'm a second generation from Gil because Virgil was trained by Gil, and then since then, I've had a number of trainings from Gil himself. And other people in the organization have had a number of trainings from Mormon and so on, as you have, and have certainly benefited by all of their experience and skills, and I'm grateful to them for that. I'm here because hypnotherapy and hypnosis has totally changed my life. I mean, if you want to talk about transformation and what's happened, I mean, I'm here because I'm grateful for what this process and these things that we've learned have done for me personally. I want to take a few minutes today and talk about a particular trance level that I think uh, we deal with a lot in our therapy practices, and that's somnambulism. When you talk about this, I know some people tell you, well, you know, there's 33 trance states, and some people tell you, well, if you do an EKG, EGG or whatever, there's 150 and all of that. I mean, I don't know about all of that. What I know is, is what I was trained in is that there's basically six observable trans states, meaning you can watch people go in and out of these states. You can kind of come to understand what they're doing, and as you learn to practice that yourself, you'll understand the different capabilities of these observable trans states. The next day down is somnambulism. Now, somnambulism is talked a lot about because people say, well, 
I want my clients to be somnambulistic because in a somnambulistic state, they're very highly suggestible, and they're uh, very creative, and they can access their imagination. Now, somnambulism is the state that we say, and as, as I was taught, that you can amplify any thought from zero to 2,500 times in your mind. Now, little kids are all natural somnambules, and most people don't come out of being a natural somnambule until sometime between years of seven and ten. And some people never come out of being a natural somnambule. I mean, there's people that will come into the office that are so somnambulistic that I never have to hypnotize them, and you don't either. Those are, those are the ones that you say, sit down, close your eyes, relax, and go to sleep, and they do it. Those are the ones that really stage hypnotists are preying upon to do the stage show with because they don't have to really hypnotize those folks. They just simply have to give them a few basic suggestions, and out they go. Your job in those situations is, and I'll be honest with you, this over my lifetime, I think I dehypnotized more people than I've hypnotized. Because your job as a hypnotherapist is to dehypnotize natural somnambulistic people and help them find consciousness. Anybody ever tell you that? That's the truth. As a hypnotherapist, you'll find that you do more dehypnosis than you will hypnosis as you deal with these people, if you're doing it, in my opinion, correctly. I'm just one voice out there, but you will find that you'll become a dehypnotist as well as a hypnotist. One of the areas that we are considered subject matter experts as hypnotherapists is the imagination. We teach people how to understand their imagination, understand where it is in their mind, understand how to desensitize from their imagination, and make all kinds of behavioral modifications because they are now controlling their imagination instead of it controlling them. One of the things that we have in America today that is causing problems nationwide is the habit and problem of pornography. We know that a recent study came out that said 47% of all the families in America are now having problems within their families due to the habits and the problems and behaviors of pornography. This problem is also well addressed through our hypnotherapy procedures that we teach here in the school. We teach people about the vain imaginations of the heart and how to challenge and change those and actually turn those off through our therapeutic processes and procedures that we teach. As a hypnotherapist, you will need to be willing to step up to the plate and work with folks and help them understand what it is that they're actually doing inside their own mind and then teach them how they can make this new decision through this decision-making process that we teach to do things new and more appropriately once again. We teach people how to conquer maladaptive behaviors. Now what we're calling maladaptive behaviors are, you know, overeating, uh, smoking, um, a habit of pornography, and other self-destructive habits that can cause the person individual harm. So, for example, we all know the consequences and the problems with smoking. This is well documented in our society now, and smoking is no longer acceptable in society as a whole. And yet people who have developed a belief system around smoking that it is still necessary or a part of their lives, and again this belief is lodged in the subconscious, this is where hypnotherapy and trance again give subconscious access and those types of issues are very well addressed through our hypnotherapy procedures and practices. Most smokers who come into hypnotherapy will give up smoking after just one or two, maybe three sessions. Because of the powerful nature and way that trance can be applied to problem solving and creating new beliefs and belief systems within the individual as directed and decided upon by the individual themselves. What else distinguishes our school from other schools? The concept and fact that we understand hypnosis and hypnotherapy in their original forms to be pondering and meditation. We understand that in the original forms of our mind that trance is a God-given gift that each of us have and can enjoy if we just understood and utilized the gift. The gift of trance and how to utilize our minds new and different is something that we teach very clearly and is very understandable and becomes very powerful in both the people that we teach and train as hypnotherapists in their 
successive client base, and also to the people who come here directly to us for hypnotherapy services. It's important right here to maybe note that all hypnosis is self-hypnosis. And really what we do in hypnotherapy is to help people do personal problem solving and to exercise their decision-making processes. We teach people where conscious choice is in their mind and how people can apply this decision-making ability to their goals. We actually teach people how to make new and more appropriate decisions. So when someone comes in who obviously made the decision at one point in their life to become a smoker, our job is to assist them through review of that decision-making process, new and different, to make a new decision to now become a non-smoker. As a certified hypnotherapist or a certified clinical hypnotherapist, you will be teaching people self-hypnosis. Self-hypnosis, when done correctly and taught appropriately, gives people all of the self-disciplines. Self-control, self-esteem, self-mastery, self-confidence, and so forth, because people come to understand how to program their own mind. And we use this old metaphor probably too much, but we compare the mind to a computer. If you have a bad script, it's like having a virus in your program that diminishes your computer's effect and it does not run well. In hypnosis and hypnotherapy, that's what we do is we help people change and alter or modify their personal behaviors. So if a person comes in and they have a behavior, that behavior was created from a stimulus and that's the Webster's Dictionary version of it, if you will. Uh, that a behavior is activity created from a stimulus. I'm paraphrasing that, but you can look that up. So that stimulus effect, if you will, generated thoughts. So our behaviors start as a thought from a stimulus. So we had this experience in school and maybe it was in grade school and when most people come in to do hypnotherapy they start back at their original issues. Uh, mom and dad issues, preschool, uh, some grade school issues and high school and so on, where we took on this stimulus of people saying, uh, you know, maybe something negative about us, you know, and we took on the belief that I'm not smart enough or I'm stupid or people have all of these things that have been buried in their subconscious belief system that still affect them to this day if it's never been appropriately challenged and changed. So what we do is, again, is that we have a stimulus and that stimulus generates these thoughts. These thoughts now pass through our critical factor area of the mind, if you will. And this critical factor area is where we filter out right and wrong, good and evil, worthy, unworthy kinds of things. But then once that thought is allowed to pass through this critical factor filter, or the critical faculty as it's called, now it will hit the subconscious mind. Once it hits subconscious functions, it goes through the imagination, and the imagination can amplify any thought in our school of thought up from zero to 2,500 times. But the point is, is that it amplifies it to a, a very great degree. So the imagination amplifies the thought. Now that thought passes through our memories. In our memories, our mind does a memory search, if you will, and looks for justifying, validating, and defending uh, data from prior experiences. From our memory, as we justify, validate, and defend the belief system thought that we've incorporated now from the stimulus, now that all dumps onto our emotions, and in an over-amplified emotional state, our, our emotions generate our behaviors because we tend to behave the way we feel. So, in a simple way, if we get up in the morning and we feel all grumpy, grouchy, and irritable, how do we behave? Well, that grumpy, grouchy, irritable behavior is coming out of a grumpy, grouchy, irritable feeling that is coming out of a grumpy, grouchy, irritable, over-amplified thought. So what trance does is trance gives us access to the subconscious. And as we have subconscious access, now we can go in and through trance, it actually slows the thought processes down. So people may have a lot of chatter going on in their head all the time, and yet trance will slow that chatter down and we can isolate thoughts one thought at a time in trance 
And as we isolate that grumpy, grouchy, irritable thought, and as we challenge and change it, and we change it appropriately, now what we have done as we've changed the thought, we have now desensitized, and it desensitizes the imagination. As the imagination is desensitized, we go into the memories, and now we alter the perception of that original stimulus. So the perception has changed, therefore we've collapsed the emotions. Now we've changed the behavior. Well, having bad scripting in our subconscious mind is equivalent to having a virus in your computer. It inhibits us, it holds us back, it binds us down, it keeps us from being who we really are, and it keeps us from becoming who we really want to be. And hypnotherapy and trance is the right way to go in and find out what that thought process is and to challenge and change it, making new and more appropriate thoughts. The reason that works is, is because trance slows our thought processes down. And trance reveals those thoughts to us in new ways that we have never known before that we could actually have the ability to know and understand them. So by going into self-hypnosis and by working with a hypnotherapist, your mind literally comes into a singularity of focus. It slows your thought processes down to where you can identify one thought after another and you can challenge and change those thoughts. That's a very simplified view of what we teach you how to do as a hypnotherapist and we give you lots of techniques and processes of how to find the thought, understand the thought, know whether that's the primary root thought or not and challenge and change those appropriately until we receive a change in the behavior that we're talking about. One more question we could ask is, well, what's the difference then between a certified hypnotherapist and a certified clinical hypnotherapist? In the first 200 hours of training, we will teach you all about trance. We will teach you how to induce trance in others. We will teach you how to manage trance. We will teach you all the self-hypnosis techniques that you will be teaching to people on an ongoing basis and you'll help them become very proficient in their own self-hypnosis. This is what we call becoming your own best behavioral therapist. Because as we teach people self-hypnosis, people learn how to challenge and change their own thoughts and they learn how to manage their own mind by this thought changing process. That's what we're calling in some degree of mind management. Even though there are a number of significant additional principles to that, that's a very quick uh, explanation of that. The difference then between a certified hypnotherapist and a clinical hypnotherapist would be is that in the clinical final 100 hours we help people to decide and refine what it is that they want to do specifically. Uh, just as uh, most doctors specialize, it's hard to be a specialist in everything in hypnotherapy. You'll find that if you decide to work with stop smoking or stop smoking groups or weight loss groups or pain control and you want to go into the hypnobirthing uh, kinds of things uh, where you work with uh, expectant mothers and helping them in pain control and having painless childbirth uh, through hypnosis, those types of things, those would be areas that we would call specialties and you would want to learn and study those and how you would apply all the trans processes and procedures that we teach you in a very specific, direct, focused manner to achieve the goals that you want to accomplish as a clinical hypnotherapist as well as be effective with those types of clients specifically. The other scriptural based concept for hypnosis and hypnotherapy that we want to explain is, and, and one of my favorite scriptures on this is James 1 and 8, a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Well, that double-mindedness means that the conscious mind believes and knows and wants to do one thing. It knows that, you know, we ought to do this or that, you know, read our scriptures every day, say our prayers, you know, all of those kinds of things it knows that we ought to be doing. And yet at a subconscious level, we are doing and believing something else again. So we have this incongruency in our thought that at some points we have a goal, we move forward, we stop. We move forward, we hesitate. Uh, we know we ought to spend this time doing this and we procrastinate. And so we get this double-mindedness, this instability, if you will, in our actions. So, for example, we work with athletes and professional athletes. 
and have experience in assisting athletes in their performance. Last but not least, well, here in the school, in time frames when we're not actually having class, we also do individual sessions of hypnotherapy, we do couples hypnotherapy, and we do group uh, hypnotherapy in general group settings as well as theme group settings such as stress reduction through self-hypnosis, weight loss again, stop smoking groups, those types of things. And you can call the Advanced Health Clinic in Farmington, Utah. It's 801-447-8680. The Advanced Health Clinic, 801-447-8680. And schedule appointments as an individual to come in and receive hypnotherapy, as couples to receive the mind management trainings, and also join a general group and come in and learn how to do self-hypnosis and do general mind management for yourself, which changes all kinds of behaviors and teaches you mental skills and processes to stay out of discouraging moments, to overcome cell slumps, to manage your mind in new and more productive ways, making you just a more productive, healthy, happy individual. We look forward to having you in the school. We look forward to assisting you to become very competent, very confident, and very effective as a hypnotherapist. I will say that hypnosis, self-hypnosis, and hypnotherapy has blessed my life in numerous ways. It has helped me to be a better person in so many ways and helped me overcome many of those things that have held me back, bound me down, kept me from being who I really wanted to be at certain points in my life. I am so grateful for understanding the processes of trance, understanding how I can go in and change my mind and make new decisions from moment to moment that are more appropriate, that are right, true, and correct for me. As a father, as a husband, as a grandfather, these skills are really invaluable. Please feel free to call me personally with any additional questions or information that you would like to know. Again, my name is Dennis Parker. You can email me questions at wdennisparker at msn.com. That's w-d-e-n-n-i-s-p-a-r-k-e-r at msn.com. Or feel free to call me anytime at 801-628-0693. I'll be happy to answer your questions. If I'm in session or in school, I won't be able to answer the phone until I get out of those, obviously. Uh, but I will return your calls as soon as possible. And I would recommend this school to anybody and everybody because any, everybody needs to learn why they are um, doing what they are in their own mind and learn how they can change that and become successful in, ever, in whatever they want to do.